Genome Editing – Q&A for Patients and Caregivers Genome editing is receiving a great deal of attention as a promising approach to treatment for those affected by rare diseases. To promote understanding of this topic, Nord invited patients, caregivers, and leaders of patient organizations to share their questions about genome editing with us. Since genome editing is potentially helpful in treating many different rare diseases, we extended this invitation to our member organizations and social media followers across the spectrum of rare diseases. This video provides responses to some frequently asked questions. Genome Editing – Your Questions Answered Part 1 – What is Genome Editing? Genome editing is a technique scientists use to correct, add, or delete a piece of genetic material in order to restore the normal function of a gene. CRISPR-Cas9 is one example of genome editing technique, but there are other methods currently being studied, and others will likely be developed. Depending on the kind of edit that is needed, some genome editors may be more relevant than others. For example, some gene editing technologies are only suited to making very small, precise changes, and other gene editing technologies are more suited to larger changes, additions, or deletions. Genome editing can be done ex vivo, outside the body, or in vivo, inside the body. With the ex vivo method, genome editing is done in cells outside the body, and then the edited cells are given to the patient, generally in an IV, similar to a blood transfusion. In vivo genome editing is done by delivering the genome editors directly into the bloodstream or, by injection, into the target tissue or organ. Does genome editing offer a cure for rare diseases? The goal of genome editing is to treat, prevent, or cure diseases caused by faulty genes by restoring normal gene function. The effects of genome editing will vary depending on the number of edited cells, as well as the stage of disease at the time that editing takes place. It will be necessary to follow patients receiving genome editing to determine if the treatment is effective for the entire lifespan and, therefore, considered a cure. Can the edited gene be passed to future generations? Right now, genome editing research is focused on somatic cells. These are all the cells present in the body other than eggs and sperm which are called germ cells. Only the germ cells are passed to offspring. Somatic cell genome editing changes the DNA in the relevant tissues or organs in the patient, but these genetic changes are not passed on to future generations. What rare diseases are most appropriate for genome editing? Genome editing is being studied in clinical trials for conditions known to be caused by mutations in a single gene. At the present time, delivering genome editors to the right cells is a major technical barrier. Researchers are working on new and improved delivery systems to target other tissues and cell types. Current clinical genome editing studies focus on diseases that affect organs for which effective delivery systems exist, including the liver, eye, and stem cells in the blood. Patients with blood cancers such as leukemia and lymphoma are also participating in genome editing clinical trials. In these studies, genes in immune cells, called T-cells, are edited to make the T-cells attack the cancer. Can a rare disease patient be too old to benefit from genome editing? The issue is not chronological age, but the stage of disease progression. Many rare diseases are progressive, which means they become more severe over time as cells die. It is possible that in some patients where too many target cells have been lost, Gene editing would not be feasible because significant benefit to the patient would not be possible. 